Welcome back, Navigators. It's been a while. It's certainly been a while. We have been really busy, Nate, huh? Uh, we've been really, really busy would be the, <laughs> that's like the understatement um, of the century, but that's why we've been uh, absent for a little while. Plus, we're now back into the summer months, which for us, that is podcast time. Yes, unfortunately, if you're from Florida, you know the chances of hurricanes get a little bit more increased this time of year. So we tend to stay local and, uh, you know, just enjoy some of our land adventures. Yeah, but uh, we want to get you all caught up on everything that's been going on. And um, I don't want to call it out, but we do have a guest in the room here in the center of the room. This is Max. Everyone say hello to Max. I don't know which camera Max is on. Oh, I think he's only on the center camera. There he is. So uh, Max is our little mascot, and we'll be telling you a little bit more about him today. Also, we are going to break down the travel nightmare that occurred uh, this past week. And if you haven't been watching the news, uh, then we'll get you all caught up to speed and talk a little bit about how you can avoid that yourself. And then finally, we will break down our time beyond, beyond, on, beyond, celebrity uh, beyond, uh, which again, we just posted the final episode which was my pizza review which what do you think of my pizza reviews i don't know nate i don't know if i'm a huge fan but you know there's people that watch it there's people that resonate with you know where to find the best pizza on a cruise ship and i think your your parody to um what you don't like my pizza reviews this is very hurtful <laughs> i mean i enjoy eating pizza um i don't know enjoy watching you eat pizza but you know i think there's all right an comment down comment down below everything. or comment on whatever plat, pod podcast platform you're on do you like pizza and do you like cruise ship pizza reviews we'll let we'll let the publics decide all right if they say no there'll be no more pizza reviews oh but if they say yes there's more there's gonna so be you know more. what you're all signing up for yeah just put a yes just in the comments just quickly put yes and that means yes you want more pizza reviews or no which means that you hate pizza <laughs> reviews <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, all right, so let's um, let's jump in. So, Colleen, do you want to tell everyone where we've been the last uh, few weeks or months? Sure. So, after we sailed Celebrity Beyond, we we did a we did a something. So, we um, have officially purchased a cruise planners franchise. So, um, what does that mean, Nate? What does that entail? Well, okay. So, last year, I, I don't think people put up on this so i'm going to be very overt about it today is like like i have been selling travel for the last year um and the reason we started selling travel is because we had people that would reach out to us ask us questions and i was like why am i sending them to someone that i don't know if they're going to take good care of them if they what their knowledge level is as it relates to cruising or travel and you know both of us have had very different levels of um you know i would say pretty high responsibilities in some of the corporations that we've worked for so I think I'm more than capable of taking care of people and their cruises. Would you Would you agree, Colleen? I would agree. I think we, um, you know, I think our motto of, of kind of the direction we're going with cruise planners is experience. Yes. And experience is defined in, I think, a couple of different ways. Yeah. So first of all, if you've been watching this channel, you know that we have extensive experience as it relates to the cruise uh, industry. Um, also when you work with us, uh, we want to make it a great experience, right? So even today, a Saturday, someone called me up, you know, I say, Hey, I had some questions, you know, most other advisors, they're, they're doing whatever taking a nap on a Saturday. I mean, I can't blame them, but, uh, you know, we're here for you when you need us. And then the final thing is, is that we're really all about you helping you create, um, having a great experience on vacation and creating those travel memories forever. So, uh, that's our plug in. We're with cruise planners because as you know, we are big time cruisers. Um, so it kind of made sense to go with a company, uh, that's very heavily focused on cruises, but, um, we do a lot more than that. Colin, you want to, we do, we do. So obviously we are, um, very knowledgeable in the all inclusive arena 
as well as um, Europe, um, whether it's land or uh, Mediterranean cruises to Greece. Um, we have kind of a, I would say, a vast experience, knowledge, and um, really want to help curate those best trips that we can for our clients. Yeah, and we just actually got back. Um, we spent the last week over in Fort Lauderdale at Cruise Planet's headquarters. Yes. Bow, 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 bow. Star University. Star University, right? Um, and uh, that was a great um exposure to all the other i think for us was mostly the non-cruise stuff that was the the most interesting because it's the stuff that um you know we're getting more knowledgeable on but just things like the tours that we can now offer people i mean it's just like you okay so so what i'm going to suggest is first of all just go to our website cruiseplannersofsouthflorida.com cruiseplannersofsouthflorida.com if you're watching on youtube i will stick a qr code somewhere (laughs) up here in the ether, you can scan that with your phone. See right now, scanning away. Let's get some scanning music. Ooh. <laughs> scan that with your phone um, and sign up for our weekly travel deals. And and to be quite honest, here's the thing: like, not going to spam you. I mean, Colin, are you going to spam people? <laughs> I'll try not to. <laughs> yeah, we'll send you like one, maybe two emails a week. Uh, if you put your phone number in there uh, and you want us to give you a call, we'll give you a quick call. But if not, you can just hang out and watch the cruise deals. And when you're ready to book something, just shoot us a note. Like mm-hmm. all of our information's on there. We'd love to help you plan that. Um, we've got some amazing, and I just don't say this like, like everyone's like, oh, I've got amazing deals. And they're not really. Not really. I would say that's one of the perks of working with cruise planners that I'm so excited about. And, and being such a large enterprise you know, there are, you know, there's home office um, perks that we can potentially offer our clients. Obviously, no guarantee and depends on cruisings and sailings and whatnot. But um, again, like you don't pay anything else additional to work with us. Yes, there's no, it doesn't cost extra money. And I think people are skeptical. And so I'm just going to get to the bottom of this right now. The travel vendors pay us commission. That's it. And they pay us commission because we're basically working for them for free until we sell something. So that's for them, it's a pretty good deal because they are not paying us to work for them until we sell something. Um, And it's great for you um, because you're not paying anything extra. And if we can give you extra perks, if we can save you additional money, sometimes it's the same money. Sometimes like it's Mm -hmm. the same thing. But the other thing is that experience right back to that. Like when you have a question or problem, you don't have to sit on hold with one of the major cruise lines or a travel vendor for hours. You send us a note, we go chase down the answer for you and we make it right. So um, I think that's about as much as I want. I don't want this to turn into an infomercial. Like, <laughs> Colleen, can you tell them what else they can get if they sign up right now? I would like to add, though, um, nope. I suggest... She, she can't help herself. Okay. <laughs> just one more thing. One more thing, Nate. Um, it's just check out our social media platforms as well. We're posing, um, posting quite a bit of great content, uh, especially around maybe types of vacations that you haven't thought about. I, one of the things I think after going to Star University that piques my interest is some of these uh, tours that you can do. And when I say tours, I'm not talking like your, you know, bus of 40 people <laughs> and going around Europe and waiting in line at events. Like some of these high end, um, I would say affordably priced for the level of yeah, service and care. It's, it's shocking how affordable this stuff is. Yes. And, you know, you don't have to wait in the lines. You get that custom, you know, curated experience. So those are the types of trips I'm getting really jazzed up about. But wait, there's more. If (laughs) you sign up right now, you can also get the Slap Chop free with every cruise purchase. That should be a promotion I do. With every cruise purchase, I get you a a Sham Wow or a Slap Chop. And you can have one of those. All right, let's, uh, let's move on. So if you've been watching the news, this Colleen, do you ever watch the news? Uh, you know, I try to stay educated on what's going on in the world. So I, I did hear some drama around travel this past yes. um, week so, or two. So, so drama both around, uh, I think it was Friday. It was one of our last days of Star U. And uh, we turned on the news to say, hey, everyone's laptops in the world aren't working. Um, of course, uh, I have a MacBook, so that wasn't a problem for me. So <laughs> not plugging for Apple, but um, just saying. Uh, but again, due to the um, crowd strike issue which somehow interfered with the ability of laptops and other computer systems around the world to boot up uh, there was a lot of problems and especially at one little airline it's a very small airline nobody <laughs> nobody was impacted we're not dropping any names none whatsoever but uh yeah you know a lot of people that were on delta 
had a very rough week and that went well into this week, including some of our fellow cruise planner franchise owners. Yes. Yes, it was. uh, We were wrapping up our week at Star University and folks are trying to get home. Folks are trying to connect through Atlanta, go to Atlanta, some of the major hubs that Delta flies through. And and it was rough. We felt for them. Yeah. And um, one of the things, too, um, that we always recommend, and again, Sometimes it doesn't get you, it's not going to get you an airplane flight necessarily, but it can make that decision of, do I make a change right now? Uh, Because I think a lot of people are like, oh, it's more expensive. I don't know if I want to move my, you know, I just got my flight canceled, but you know, they can, they told me I can get out on Monday. I don't know if I want to, it's like get travel insurance, get travel insurance. I can't reiterate that enough. I think we saw it firsthand and a lot of examples of, you know, folks that had a little bit more flexibility because they had to purchase their travel insurance and, you know, they were able to get home in a reasonable amount of time and had a, a few more options to help facilitate, you know, that travel day and get themselves back to their bed. Yeah. And the other thing is, too, is like, you know, let's think about this from what if you were about to take a cruise? Exactly. We've seen some, um, even some fellow YouTubers and not saying that they didn't get travel, um, travel insurance or not, but you know, unfortunately they, they missed a a cruise, just, um, you know, bad weather, weren't able to fly into, uh, the cruise port airport area and, um, unfortunately missed the cruise. So, yeah, so it can happen. So, um, a couple things. So I'm just gonna, I mean, we have to, I feel like every six months we have to reiterate these things. Like, first of all, get it, get cruise and get cruise, get travel insurance. Um, you can buy stuff through the cruise lines, but what people also found out last week is that that may or may not cover your flights. Even if you've booked the flights through the cruise line, it may not cover it. So our recommendation is to, um, you know, you can definitely always look at the, I don't want to poo poo the cruise lines because it might be the right option for you depending on your Mm -hmm. circumstance. But what I would say uh, is that you should definitely look at a third party uh, option and again we can always offer that to you even if you've already booked your cruise uh, we said this wasn't going to be an info commercial but uh, we can always give you a quote um, the preferred vendor for cruise planners is Allianz a lot of people use them um, some people come and say oh it's too expensive but I'm like no, you kind of get what you pay for I mean it's a very comprehensive coverage uh, again we're not insurance agents so we can't get into coverage details but we can send you a quote on Allianz behalf and you can check it out for yourself but definitely we get that. Um, any other recommendations, though, when it comes to flying, Colleen? I would say, you know, especially if you're going to be traveling domestically, give yourself at least 24 hours if you are boarding a cruise or you have to be at a certain spot at a certain specific time. Um, and if you're flying internationally, not only just for the, the jet lag and the time change, you know, give yourself 48 hours. You know, there's a lot of whether it's weather. Wait, so I shouldn't fly in same day for my, my Mediterranean no, cruise? No, Nate. No. Did you not learn anything? But I can save a few dollars. <laughs> it is not or worth Or a few it. euros. And you know what? You can you can use that time to explore your your embarkation port area. You know Barcelona, uh, Madrid, wherever you're going. Spend some time and enjoy that local area and get readjusted and just have that peace of mind to know that you're ready to go and board your cruise. Yeah, I think um, if you're going across more than one time zone now, my recommendation is definitely 48 hours. So if you have to cross over two time zones, right? I think that's a good rule of thumb. Uh, you need to give yourself a couple days. Some people might be like, oh, that's ridiculous. But, you know, again, uh, we we had people in our class in Fort Lauderdale from Seattle, like they weren't getting home for two or three days. So you can poo-poo me all you want. Uh, but I would say, you know, coming from the West Coast to the East Coast or vice versa, you should probably give yourself two days. And I think now for Europe, I'm going to definitely be recommending three days ahead of time just because... Um, it's one thing if you're taking a trip, just taking a trip in Europe and you, things can get a, rearranged and hotel rooms rebooked and stuff like that. But if you have to catch a train or a bus or a cruise ship like, or a group tour or a group tour or whatever it is, I think you need to fly in three days early. Plus, you'll have that jet lag. Uh, you'll be able to it takes takes a couple days before you feel a little bit better. So uh, again, um, but it sounds like most people um, from our class have gotten home now, which is good. Excellent. And it seems like uh, things with Delta uh, have improved throughout the week. Uh, But again, these things, it seems like every six months, one of these airlines just has a a meltdown. 
Well, there's lots of factors out there. A lot of people are getting back, especially after the the pause and um, starting to to travel again. So I think, you know, whether it's uh, airlines, cruise lines, I think folks are are seeing the influx of travelers, which is great. All right. So uh, let's talk about what everyone's here for today. So Celebrity Beyond, we our, our take on Celebrity Beyond. Uh, Colleen, do you, you know, should people go on Celebrity Beyond? Is it everything it's hyped up to be? Uh, especially you, you got to meet Captain Kate. Um, I did. Which you, was... Did you feel like that was like a, like a spiritual moment, like an awakening? <laughs> Might be creepy if I say yes, but... <laughs> <laughs> You'll get banned from Celebrity. <laughs> exactly. But I am a huge, uh, huge fan of Celebrity as a whole. Um, I love the cruise line. I love everything about it. Um, I love the level of service that you receive. And I'm going to kind of dive into a little bit around, around to around the accessibility and things that I've, you know, kind of viewed over the last couple of celebrity cruises we've been on but yeah meeting captain kate and then obviously seeing bug naked uh from a distance like of course can't hold her but um was top notch yeah it was really good so um actually i met someone um uh, at the hotel who was going on celebrity beyond and gave them um i just started talking i guess people don't there's some tips and tricks out there that people don't realize about celebrity uh that's very unique to the cruise line they were amazed that i knew all this stuff and they're like do you have a youtube channel i'm like well actually i do <laughs> um so colleen any any particular tips and tricks that you want to share well i would say first and foremost that i absolutely love is when you get on the cruise ship you can actually take whatever carry-on luggage that you may be holding, purses, backpacks, little duffel bags. You can take them right to your cabin. So even if the room steward is still making up your room and you know putting its finishing touches on your cabin, you can at least drop that off and you kind of feel like, okay, I'm getting settled. And that's a huge thing that none of the other cruise lines are doing. Yeah, and if you travel light, you know, some people just, I've been seeing more people doing carry-ons. It's like, just carry on, carry on. Um, you know, then you're done. Your luggage is in your room and you're good to go um, until basically, you know, you're ready to go in your room full time. So I definitely recommend that. Um, my recommendation would be, I think, also to book a reservation at Eden. I think of all the specialty dining that we've done on any cruise ship, uh, I think Eden stands out. And is a now. Now I'm not going to give you getting reservations at Eden. Maybe <laughs> you are spoiling it for don't yourself. Don't actually <laughs> do book. If if you know we're going on a sailing, don't book Eden. It's horrible. No, uh, book Eden. It's the best. And if you're going to go there, they have an open kitchen. Get a seat down by the kitchen. Don't get a seat up where you can't see what's going on. Your thoughts on that, Colleen? I mean, it depends on the time that you like to dine. So Nate and I are late diners for those that don't know. So, you know, it's typically dark when we're eating. So you can't really see uh, the beautiful wake behind the aft of the ship, which is where the restaurant is located. But if you're going to eat at five, six o'clock, I think that's a problem. I disagree. Just sit by the kitchen. <laughs> You are not going to get any Gordon Ramsay type of moments. I will tell you that they are very. I don't know, like, man. Uh, the, the first time we were there, I could tell that that chef wanted to drop some f bombs. He seemed pretty <laughs> unhappy with with the way things were going. He had to take a moment to chill out. The hand, hands down, the food is fantastic. The experience, um, the attentiveness of the staff, and so you know, if you don't book Eden before you get on the ship, my tip would be just go down to. Um, to the actual restaurant on boarding day and see what they have for availability. Yeah, that's what I did last time because I was stupid and didn't book it. He said, oh, no, we're going to be going on Celebrity again. I don't want to ruin it and do it too many times in a row. And I'm like, you're going to just regret yeah. not so, having dined So I there. went and booked it. And now for our next Celebrity sailing, I have it booked again. And yes. I'll probably book it again for Alaska because we're going on Celebrity again. So. Yes, we are. So as you can tell, guys, we are we're big fans of Celebrity. Um, one of the things, too, after you get on the ship, you drop off your, your um, carry-on luggage, go to the Ocean View Cafe, which is their buffet. I have to say, I think as far as buffet food goes, and I'm not a buffet person. I'll just, just caveat that. Hands down, the best. Yeah, I would say it's definitely the best. I, I feel like on other cruise ships, I will avoid the buffet um, at all costs. The only other exception would probably be the galley on Virgin Voyages, which is really not a buffet. It's right. kind of like mini restaurants. But yeah, the food's really good. Um, the other thing is, too, 
get an early boarding time, get the earliest boarding time that you can. Cause I don't think there's been one time like we've had an early boarding time, but we got on that ship almost every single time at like 11, 10, 11, 15. Agreed. And you can then just run to your cabin, drop your stuff off and head down to the buffet. And there was nobody in there. There really wasn't. And one of the things that I love about the staff that works the buffet is as soon as they see me wheel in, they are so attentive. They'll come over, they'll grab a plate, they'll, I'll say, I have no idea what I want to eat. It's going to take me five minutes to like roll around and decide. No problem, madame, we'll come with you. And you know, they're they're in their head. They're like, come on, lady, just pick something. (laughs) Just pick your food and sit. Um, They'll help me, you know, reach something. If I can't, they'll help serve me on the plate. And then they'll walk my plate to a table. They'll find a table for me. One of the things that I love about Celebrity and Royal Caribbean as well, since they are kind of under the same umbrella, is they have designated tables kind of along the perimeter of the buffet that are very near the actual serving stations that have a designated wheelchair symbol on there. So it's easy access to wheel your wheelchair right underneath, um, as well as they're available and designed to be for wheelchair yeah. users. If this is the first episode you've ever watched, Colleen's a full-time wheelchair user, in case you're wondering. She just doesn't sit in her wheelchair for the podcast because that would just be uncomfortable to sit sit there <laughs> well you know it's like i i sit on the couch normally so yeah. this is no different yeah she's transfers in there so yeah. um definitely that um i think the other things obviously uh if you can go on celebrity beyond and you can get a time when captain kate's going to be on there that's really cool because you get the special things like the captain's talk which was really cool can get to hear all about captain kate's life and experience uh and then the bug naked trivia which we did horrible Oh, and the sad thing is, is we like, we, we kind of crammed and tried to research like all the little bits of facts and figures and we still did horribly. I think other, um, honestly, I think other people just cheated. (laughs) They They specifically said no phone usage. Well, no, I mean like just wrote down the answers once they gave them. Someone's like, yes, I got all of them correct. I'm like, sure, <laughs> you did. But there are folks that I guess there's 100 out of 100. Like they, they yeah. nailed it. Okay. It's just me being sour grapes. Um, no, seriously. You didn't get to have your picture taken with Buck Naked. I know. Um, but all we right. we do have our picture with Captain Kate. Yes, we do. And that was fantastic. Actually having a little bit of a meet and greet. That's one thing about... You know, Captain Kate that I absolutely love is she's very in tune to her, you know, her her folks that sail with her and want to, you know, she makes appearances. She is very approachable. She'll head down in the morning, get her cup of coffee at Cafe El Bacchio, and she'll sit and chat with you for a moment. You know, she's obviously a busy woman, but she takes the time out of her day for her cruisers. Yep. Yep. Captain Kate's the best. She um is. So let's talk a little bit about some other things. So obviously the silent disco, if you haven't done that, you have to do silent disco aboard celebrity. They do it better than anybody. I feel like the people really like to party on celebrity. They really like the silent disco. They do. They do it kind of uh, next to uh, the, the um, sorry, the martini bar in kind of the main atrium area. So it's a good space. It's open, but honestly, they could probably double the size of the space given the number of people that want to participate. And they hold a couple of silent discos throughout. Yeah, each and they're, they're always busy um, too. People have a blast at them. Um, all right, and then I think the highlight of our trip was Aruba. So what happened in a uh, in Aruba? So um, again, as Nate has mentioned, I'm a full-time wheelchair user. So sometimes going in some of these Caribbean islands, it can be a little bit challenging um, finding accessible tours. Um, but we found a fantastic company, and I want to give a shout out to We Welcome Wheelchairs, based in Aruba. Yeah, they're great. Um, took us around. I think they spent more time with us than we originally booked. I mean, it was like we were about a half hour over. They took us to some different spots, like the IO rock formations, which there was nobody there. And nobody really, see, he told us, like, no, most tourists don't come here because nobody knows about it. They go to the place where they have all the touristy stuff. But you get to see the uh, petroglyphs is what they're called, which is like the indigenous, um, you know, people of that island actually like that lived there thousands of years ago. It's really cool. Um, learned a whole bunch about the island that we didn't know. Um, and it was a great time and it was a, it's a nice air conditioned tour and 
we we welcome wheelchairs also does airport transportations and other just transportation around the island so if you're we're thinking about maybe going back to aruba and um spending and taking an extended vacation um there uh, which is very unusual for us to stop in one spot and just <laughs> stay there but it's such a nice island um i think it'd be a great place to go and spend a week or so your thoughts colleen I 100% agree. And I think I, you know, I can't say enough about Alex, um, who was our, um, the company owner tour guide for us, um, you know, perfectly, you know, accessible vehicle, easy to wheel in. I actually got the front seat of the van and Nate had to sit in the back seat. Yep. I was in the back seat. <laughs> so I was feeling a little spoiled, but just nice touches, you know, a little cooler with some, some fresh water for us. Cause it's hot. It's Aruba. You're on the equator. Um, but took us, like Nate said, to spots that are probably not as like touristy. Um, but we did get to see some of the famous, you know, landmarks like the lighthouse and whatnot, but can't say enough about we welcome wheelchairs and Alex. And, uh, we'll also add that they don't necessarily just do, um, transportation for those in wheelchairs. Anyone can utilize them. So if you're looking to fly in and you need a little transportation to go to your hotel, look up Alex and we welcome wheelchairs. Great. Sorry, just like on my like my little pad here that with the camera is like all of a sudden I lost the controls. I got him back though. All right, he's so, back. See, we do this all live. Like we don't edit this at all. So this is it's what you terrifying, get. Terrifying, folks. It's not. Well, I'm trying to get her to. Okay, so comment one more comment down below. Comment down below if you want us to do this live. Live. I have no idea how to. We, I know we can do it with the equipment we have, but if you want us to do a live live podcast sometimes or like an ask us anything i was gonna say we could answer questions if folks wanted to reach out to us we could do it live yeah oh. do it live oh my goodness i told Colin, you gotta just google bill o'reilly do it live i'm not gonna say it. you can't you can't say what he actually said but do it live <laughs> um anything about um celebrity anything about our crews that um you didn't like uh, not, that not to be all negative, but, no, I mean, we, but gotta I, give, I think, we gotta balance it out here for folks. Yeah, no, I think we need to be realistic. So I would say hands down, it was probably one of my favorite cruises. Um, and I think what was unique about this particular sailing was it felt very full. Um, it felt like we were at capacity and I'm not sure if some of the third and fourth persons were all filled up in the rooms, he, he, but it was maxed yeah, out. Yeah. So some inside baseball here, um, celebrity had been running sometime before our cruise a third and fourth guest sale free and what they thought originally it was going to be families that were taking advantage of that offer oh no folks it was it was adults um taking yeah. advantage of that offer so this was a very sold out booked sailing um and again it was still fine i think the there was one point and that was the last day or the last full day on board the ship in the buffet was like something the best the extravaganza. I can extravaganza. Wasn't it called like yeah. the buffet extravaganza? It was called the buffet extravaganza. And there was like this, like it was, I mean, it looked great, but it was just mayhem. It was like every, I mean, there was like shrimps piled high and carving stations. I mean, they had, they, I feel like they had that like all week long, but there was something about this last day, sea day uh, where everyone showed up. Yeah. The and, and, and like we couldn't find seating. And I was just like, after a, short time i was just like i'm so annoyed with this i like just want to leave so that was the i think that was the only low point of the whole cruise which was um that last day buffet people just went crazy and it was just became like you know and here's okay some etiquette as well too. i'm gonna ha i hate to go here but like when you, if it's that busy in the buffet when you're done eating leave right just just go somewhere and I hate to say that, but people are like, well, I paid for my cruise. I'm going to sit here if I want. It's like, it's just common courtesy. Like, finish your food and go, I don't know, play bingo, sit in the sun, do whatever. Um, that would be my advice. Um, I think the other thing about celebrity, and this is not just a celebrity issue, but like shade. Can we just start getting some more shade on I these ships? I would love that. Um, I feel like with celebrity, they've got the solarium, which is gorgeous and there is some kind of under undercover you know loungers that you can sit in but again i'm not an early riser as we all have known this yeah, this place this was chair hog city it this was cruise. 
It was. On sea days, it was really, really hard. Um, you know, if we came back onto the ship uh, on a port day a little bit early, we had no issues. We were able to find loungers and could kind of sit in the shade. But sea days were rough. And, you know, it, even if we just want to sit I outside. I think chair hogs should walk the plank. I think that's, <laughs> I think we should need to bring back the plank. I, and you know what? Knowing Royal Caribbean group, they would probably charge to watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness, Nate. <laughs> But, you know, it took us some time. And I think, you know, my tip would be look for kind of alternative places. So the Magic Carpet is is a great little venue. It's not always open, but fantastic for sailaways if you can get a spot there. Um, and then there is, although it's not really full shade, there is like a kind of a canopy that, mi- you know, minimizes the amount of sun you get. But it's um, they've got fantastic high coaches. And that's what I was struggling to find was um, accommodations that I could like easily transfer onto. And I think Magic Carpet had fantastic seating. Um, we did find some seating that I kind of doubled up cushions to make it a little bit higher for myself, um, which was along where the um, cabanas are that you can reserve. And then again, the solarium has some some seating as well. So for this yep. redhead, I need to find all the shade I can. Yeah, and living in Florida too, you know, you kind of, you know, when you have to start going to the dermatologist twice a year to get cut up, you're kind of like, yeah, I don't want to spend that much time in the sun. But I get it. We were from the Northeast originally, and uh, I think that we would come down here to Florida and we would, you know, spend as much time in the sun as we could because we'd have to go back to the tundra and live under the darkness for another few months. So, um, but overall, would you, final thoughts here, would you recommend Celebrity Beyond? Absolutely. Absolutely. I would recommend, I think, any Celebrity Edge class ship. They are my favorite. They're your favorite. That's a bold statement. They are my favorite. I think um, after, you know, granted, we've got another few cruises coming up, and that may turn the tide of my opinion. But currently where I stand, I would say I'm a a hands-down fan favorite of Celebrity Edge class ships. Yeah, I would agree with you. Celebrity Beyond, um, Celebrity Edge class ships are amazing. They are a, they're very different. I think that's the other thing. If you've been on an older class ships, which are fine, Solstice class, that was the first cruise we ever did on the Celebrity uh, Equinox. Uh, the great ships. It's just, it's just they're different. It's almost like they're different cruise lines. That's like how it feels. Like outside of the food and the service being really good on all Celebrity. Um, cruises um it's just like a whole different experience it is you know it's definitely i would say more classic cruising um you know smaller in size um but i didn't i never feel that the edge class ships are too much um you know granted it's not an icon of the seas where you have seven thousand people but it's not going to be an equinox where you've got far less it's i feel like it's a perfect balance in between there's plenty of space um, elevators are generally never an issue. Um, so for me, it's just the perfect size ship and gives all the right accommodations. Great. Well, I think that's going to do it for us. So glad to be back. And the podcasts are going to be coming out every other week now for, you know, until whenever, until we get back into cruise season and we start getting, uh, gets, things get a little bit choppier. Uh, we are have some travel coming up in August as well, too, so more to come on that, but we're going to take you to one of the newest resorts here in Florida, so really excited to, to bring folks along for that. Uh, and then next time, uh, we have some news on a hotel chain uh, that got themselves in a little bit of trouble, uh, but maybe it was well-deserved. Spicy. Yes. Spicy. We'll, well spill the tea. <laughs> see, see, I'm, see what I'm doing now? I'm trying to drag the people in, right? That's Stay tuned. That's broadcasting 101. I know. Nice job, Nate. Yeah, I'm trying there. So again, uh, appreciate you coming along. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. I mean, I, I'm just going to stress this. It really does help the channel. Um, again, if you are new here, I'm Nate and this is Colleen. Uh, This is our podcast, Navigate With Us, um, and we would love to welcome you to subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. And actually, I'm going to start to say that now because somebody asked me the other day, like, does it cost money to subscribe? I'm like, no. So if you're on YouTube, just hit that subscribe button. If you're on your um, whatever favorite podcast platform, just hit the follow or subscribe button as well, too. And as always, we'll remind you to navigate navigate your your world. world.